Well, let's um, let's kick this off with uh, with just a bit of an overview. So this this space is is going to be a bit of a mashup. We're going to discuss the campaign that just went live on Geyser, which is um, which is a Spirit of Social campaign. I'm going to talk about the the kind of the three core pillars of the campaign, um, which is the open source initiative. Uh, the launch of the first collaborative trading cards pack and the launch of the first book co-written by an AI. So um, first of all, um, before I do that, I just want to get for those uh, listening for the benefit of everybody, just a quick intro from everyone on the stage. So, you know, a lot of people may or may not me, but not may or may not know me, sorry. Um, but Svetsky, I founded the um, Spirit of Satoshi project about a year and a bit ago. Maybe, maybe it's actually, maybe it's just been a year. Um, with the with the intent to build a Bitcoin centric um, language model, which seems to be ever more important with uh, with all the funny shit going on in AI these days, particularly the, the Gemini thing um, of the last week or two. Um, and yeah, previous to that, I um, I've written a whole lot of words about Bitcoin. I think about two million uh, words in total uh, across the Bitcoin Times, Bitcoin Magazine, Medium, Substack, all sorts of different places. Um, also wrote the Uncommunist Manifesto and kind of started the whole uh, Bitcoin only DCA app movement with uh, with Amber in Australia. So been around doing a bunch of things um, and excited to be uh, working on this initiative alongside the Bitcoin trading cards guys and um, and doing some of the AI things. So so that's a bit about me, um, Aladdin. Let's throw it over to you and we'll go around the room quickly. Yeah, so I created uh, Bitcoin trading cards. Is it me or did we just lose Aladdin? I think we just lost him for a second. Aladdin? Okay. Oh, can you hear me now? now yep, gotcha. You. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, Bitcoin trading cards. I'm the founder. Um, we created this uh, basically as a really simple way for the general public to learn about Bitcoin in a physical way. Um, making uh, Bitcoin as fun as possible, I saw when I was orange pilling people, is really the, the first way to get them to kind of put their guard down and start to learn. So these are a physical pack of trading cards that take you from freedom uh, financial education, monetary history, all the reasons we need Bitcoin, and then a bunch of touch points on how Bitcoin works. Uh, you could consider it flashcards for Bitcoin, and we do it in the funnest way possible. Um, put a really amazing chase into it so that people have an enjoyable way to basically start taking their orange pill. And uh, yeah, well, we can get more into it throughout the day. Amazing, amazing. Um, uh, Brandon Oliver, or one of you guys wants to go next. Hey, hey, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm on uh, Oliver's uh, handle. We're actually together right now, actually working on uh, kind of behind the scenes and marketing and stuff like that. So um, that's my uh, position in all this kind of head manning, just marketing overall, uh, the structure for Bitcoin trading cards, um, kind of being one of the point people. Uh, just out uh, in the ecosystem, and, you know, on space is doing things of this nature and uh, letting the team do their do their thing behind the scenes and kind of create the magic, uh, the art, all the beautiful things that you see. That is that is not me at all. So uh, <laughs> so uh, that's that's really my role in all this. And we're super excited for uh, what you're doing, Alex, and, and uh, Spirit Satoshi. And this is going to be a beautiful thing going forward, just kind of the uh, pioneering this collaborative uh, the, the physical card effort and educating, uh, you know, Bitcoin, uh, educating people on and spreading Bitcoin adoption everywhere. Thank totally, you. totally. There's going to be there's going to be a lot more collaborative stuff we're going to do together. I can promise you that. Love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, OK, then also myself, Oliver, Oliver Samatowski. I'm also, I also part now of the Bitcoin trading cards team. Um, supporting with anything basically i can like from starting from strategy and some other topics but the reason is why you know i i and that 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 might be extremely simple and easy to understand once you understand who is the founder of the project aladdin and understanding the core values and vision behind the bitcoin trading cards which is amazing truly um a pro a, a project that uh, with a target with a pure vision and the mission to orange peel the world and um, combining this with uh, you know a, a physical unique trading cards 
with the technology the spirit of satoshi is doing it's i think a really unique blend that we we really appreciate you know having this partnership and i'm really excited to see how this campaign and this partnership is going to look in the future so i'm happy to be on the team and I'm looking forward to today's conversation amazing all right so let's um let me let me start this by just setting the stage of uh, of, of how this whole idea came about um and and that's to that's actually to do with um, with what we're calling proof of work. So, sorry, proof of knowledge. Jesus Christ, proof of work. I'm not Adam Beck. Um, anyway, so the the whole Geyser campaign came about as uh, you know the team and I we've been tinkering, and I should you know I, I say that word very specifically because what we found is um, developing uh, language models and messing around with AI is, is is often more art than it is science. You know, it's kind of given this. Uh, this view out in the mainstream that it's like, you know, oh, this precise thing that someone builds. But more often than not, what we found is, you know, even the people who supposedly, you know, have PhDs in the AI space, they, you know, really have no idea what the fuck's going on and how things work. Like everyone's sort of making it up as they go. They're tinkering, they're experimenting. And sure, there is an element of science, but a lot of it is art. And what we've, um, what we've established out of that is the pieces that are, um, that are as scientific as possible or, or, or that, uh, offer some reproducibility, uh, things like data quality, um, or, you know, data correctness. And even, even those two terms, uh, are subjective in nature, right? Because, you know, the quality is really defined by the outcome that you want, um, a model to produce. And, and in our case, obviously building a Bitcoin language model, we want it to be as Bitcoiner as possible. And, you know, to, to be a Bitcoiner basically implies, um, you know, ad adopting a particular model of the world, right? Like, you know, Bitcoiners know fundamentally that things like inflation are bad. You know, there's, there's no, there's no conception that it's like, oh yeah, well, what about a little bit inflation? You know, like two percent inflation, maybe stuff like that. It just doesn't, it doesn't register. It doesn't work um, in the Bitcoin paradigm. And you know, I see, you know, Brad's joined the call here. So Brad's been one of our, um, one of our biggest supporters on this journey. Is that okay? Can we go out there? Can we do what somebody else hasn't done? And that is build a language model with a fundamentally different uh, model of the world, right? Um, and th this has been a, a real challenge um, because all of the data sets out there that exist essentially have embedded within them. And, it, and when I say embedded within them, I mean the, the data is made up of basically what you would find on Wikipedia. And what you would generally find on Wikipedia is sort of mainstream thought, right? And whether it's open source or closed source models, they all come with this. So for us, it was really challenging, you know, in, in a sense to go out and uh, build a whole new data set. And not challenging for the reasons you might think, because, you know, all of the Bitcoin information is out there. There's a million books written about Bitcoin. There's podcasts. There's, you know, articles. God knows how many articles. There's articles about, you know, Bitcoin Australian economics. There's articles about Bitcoin and fucking mushrooms, right? Like there's, there's everything. The challenge was how do we take that data and transform it into a format that is useful for the training of a language model? And doing that, um, programmatically speaking, is very hard because the only way to do it programmatically is to use existing language models. And when you use existing language models, you start to inject mainstream bias into it. So we went out and we actually built a little tool to enable uh, Bitcoiners who, you know, as you can probably understand, are the only ones who understand the Bitcoin paradigm really well. We built a tool to enable them to assist us in curating, collecting, cleaning, and developing this um, this data set. And we did this as an experiment. We didn't know if this was going to work. We're like, okay, well, what if we just pay some people some sats, you know, build some sort of, um, you know, little mechanism for them to be rewarded and to sort of filter out bad responses and to focus on good responses and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, we came up with something. We kind of called it proof of knowledge. And in that, we basically... I can't remember how many sats we paid out off the top of my head, but, you know, it was, it was a decent number. And we had people from all around the world contribute um, and uh, basically help us develop a data set that we then later used for uh, different parts of the, um, of the training process. So we did that for phase one. 
Um, we, you know, we, we built an okay model. Um, recently, we've been messing around, like really, really fine tuning it. And hopefully in the next week or two, we'll have a, um, our latest model, which is really, we've had a breakthrough and it's like, it's a, it's quite a nuanced uh, based Bitcoiner. So stay tuned for that. But what we wanted to do, we wanted to take this process that we had already done and scale it up. We, you know, we wanted to do a 10x of what we did before. We had about four or 500 um, contributors last time. This time we want to have a couple thousand contributors. And we said, all right, well, how about we raise some money from the community and let's put it towards what is essentially going to become a, a global Bitcoin utility. Because that's the way we see it. Like, you know, we, we at, initially we wanted to build a business here, but like really the long-term future for Spirit of Satoshi is to make it a globally available, uh, accessible Bitcoin education tool. We want it to be free. We want it to be out there for everyone. We're going to open source the whole thing. And we want it to be something that anybody can access and basically check the vid validity of a Bitcoin statement, of a piece of FUD or whatever, right? So anyway, long story short, to sort of finish this diatribe of mine is, um, is we decided to put together a geyser campaign and with, with the explicit... Uh, end or with the explicit goal of raising some money from the community. We, we sort of envisioned it as there's people out there with knowledge and no sats and there's people out there with probably knowledge and sats but just don't have the fucking time. Um, how about we match those two together and enable uh, those people out there with, with the time and the knowledge but without the sats to be able to contribute to this project. Let's raise uh, some Bitcoin, let's distribute it to them. But let's not just do it on that promise, let's also give something back to the contributors. And the two things we came up with was one, uh, the 21 Questions book, which is the first book co-written uh, by an AI. Um, it has contributions also from, you know, the Giacomo Zuccas of the world, Knud, uh, Natalie Brunel, Guy Swan, uh, I believe um, Samson Mao is in there. There, there. There's a bunch of awesome contributors in there. And we think it's going to become one of the best Bitcoin beginner books on the planet because we took out of the thousands of questions that we trained Satoshi on, we took the top 21, the most pertinent, the most common, the most um, important questions and distilled them down. And we answer each of these questions with the AI and also with, um, with all of these contributors. Um, and the other idea we had uh, was to reach out to the gentleman at BTC Trading Cards and to do um, a collaboration with them around initially what was the, um, the Spirit of Satoshi character, which then evolved uh, into this um, this whole multi-tier uh, setup and what's effectively, and Aladdin, correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is going to be the first uh, collaborative pack you guys are doing, right? Yeah, absolutely it is. Yep. Uh, it couldn't be a better project to, to launch it with. So, so yeah, so, so basically to, to sum it up, thank you for that. Like the, the, the campaign is essentially the, the core of it is this proof of knowledge project and this, um, this, this co-funding of the open source Spirit of Satoshi initiative. Um, you know, when we've done the next model, we're going to open source everything on Hugging Face. We're going to put it up on Unleash.chat, uh, NVK's thing, and it's going to be available for everybody anywhere in the world to use. Um, so that's step one. Step two is we wanted to give something back to all the contributors, and that is the 21 Questions book, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, and uh, the trading cards. So I would love to have a conversation now um, about the trading cards, um, and I want to hand the mic over to, um, to either yourself, Aladdin, or Oliver, or anything like that, and start talking a little bit about the um, kind of the journey we took in you know, getting to where we are now with, um, with launching these cards. Beautiful. Yeah. Our, when we first started talking and I, I discovered uh, what you're doing with Spirit of Satoshi, uh, our incentives were aligned. Uh, so incredible on this one, um, being able to get Bitcoin knowledge out to the general public in as simple a way as possible, I think is, is by far the most important and there's so many questions out there for I talk to people all the time about Bitcoin that know nothing about Bitcoin. And it's a really hard, hard push on a lot of people because the conversation about Bitcoin dives into so many other elements of the world. And uh, there's so much cognitive dissonance that's built into people. Uh, 
for a very long time with all the propaganda that's going around. So we really need to find a way to empower the, the individual to be able to ask these questions. And from what I've seen personally, it usually opens up more of a debate than anything. So being able to find a way to give them the power to ask these questions without uh, opening up these conversations with an individual, in my opinion, is really important. So that's where the trading cards come in really well, because, <clears throat> for example, you have a your Thanksgiving dinner and you start the conversation and who knows where it'll go. But at the same time with these trading cards, you can hand them a pack and let them just have some fun opening trading cards. And little do they know the Trojan horse is uh, immediately going to work because the, the art and the fun of the chase is really what's getting them interested. But every card is packed full of education. So when we started talking about this, uh, the idea to be able to uh, create this first collaboration, which is by far one of the most important things that we do with the trading cards uh, beyond the, the orange pilling, is bringing the Bitcoin community together as much as possible. Uh, I say this all the time. We are up against uh, the biggest battle in human history, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, trying to fix the monetary system. I, I can't do anything bigger than that. So going at it alone or in pieces, see a, a real potential for success in that way. I see the success coming from us Bitcoiners coming together and finding ways to join teams and join hands to really make the, the biggest impact out there. So when we're thinking about coming up with a collaborative series where we can really work with different companies out there that are pushing Bitcoin adoption. And then we started talking, Alex, this was the perfect production. And at the same time, uh, a lot of kids are really in the AI nowadays. So it's already something they're very interested in. And that's the biggest thing that we need to do with these cards is find a way to uh, relate to especially kids because they're the next generation that's really going to be making a lot of the decisions as we move forward and, and getting them started now before uh, the propaganda melts their brains and it makes them unmovable. I think this is a really big opportunity for us and the artwork that we had to do with this was a lot of fun. So being able well, that, to create these packs and rewards, sorry. No, I was going to say th that's exactly what I wanted to drill into was the, um, the process of, uh, of designing these packs because the, you know, we, we went through like a, a really unique um, phase there, but anyway, so, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just, I wanted to like make sure that we, we take some time to like dig into that. So I'll, I'll let you finish your stream of thought. I, I don't know if we lost maybe shortly Aladdin. I will I will maybe just um, also from Bitcoin trading cards point of view, maybe just to elaborate um, on, on one of the points that we just touched upon vision and values and how we build uh, the company around these, these trading cards. And I'll start maybe with um, Alex's your intro. Proof of work. Well, for me, the summary of proof of work, it's basically trying to teach a machine or a, a language model to differentiate the signal, which is Bitcoin, from the noise, the, the mainstream, the, the mainstream propaganda, whatever you can we can read from the outside. Um, Bitcoin trading cards is doing just that as well. Every pack that you open, there is no noise inside of those packs. You have an amazing art that is somehow related to Bitcoin. And, and every card is full of signal, basically. We, we are full of uh, understanding what is Bitcoin and trying to truly understand um, how the world that we live in actually has been built upon. And that made in such an easy way that um, even people who are maybe hearing Bitcoin for the first time and are maybe having slight difficulties to truly understand something that is I would say non-material, right? Bitcoin is digital and, and many of, uh, of of us might have also trouble understanding like immaterial things. And now when you have like Bitcoin, okay, this is, this is something in cyberspace. And all of a sudden you have a trading card. Oh, I understand. Now you can start reading through it. And I think this is also what the Aladdin pointed out, a Trojan horse, you know, the, the, the most positive Trojan horse that you can find to, to somehow help people understand the signal from the noise. And I think, again, this is another parallel how I believe that uh, 
Spirit of Satoshi team and the Bitcoin Trading Cards team have a very, very similar vision of bringing, it, uh, bringing Bitcoin to the world. So I don't know if Aladdin is back, uh, if he can, if he's able to to help us a little bit on the, or, or I don't know, Kyle, if you want to add up anything on the, on my thoughts. Yeah. Hey guys. Uh, hey, hey team. And I'll just quick introduction. I'm Coyle. Uh, I, I break the trading cards as well as work on the team um, in different capacities, but I really come from the, you know, Svetsky, you want to talk about how the trading cards were designed and I'm sure we'll get into that um, on, on the level of what the experience is like as a trading card collector um, with these Bitcoin trading cards coming from somebody, you know, I'm 20 some years old. I've been collecting for 20 years since I was a child. Um, these cards are that next level of, you know, I have a passion for education. I wanted to scale it. I have a passion for collectibles and I wanted to scale it. And here we are kind of combining the two of, bringing along a level of innovation to a hobby that's so global, so rooted in sentimental emotion, um, you know, that it touches so many people, even though it's just cardboard, but the imagery and the education side of it, that both through the text and through the visual art um, is really, you know, I was at a recent convention and it just really hits home with a lot of people that have never learned about Bitcoin, um, heard about it. I mean, most have heard about it at this point, but um, it really breaks down the barriers of, of comfort um, and opens kind of the, the floor for, for that conversation um, to take place. And then, of course, for them to go home and, and embrace these cards and, and play with them and use them um, with their family and friends um, in a safe place. So just want to chime in there The you know, the cards combined with the collaborative series is something that I, I hope can and, and believe will continue to grow. I think um, the community, both in Bitcoin and outside of Bitcoin, is going to you know really be rewarded um, from the work of, of the teams that put these products together because um, you know supporting great projects and pushing education through these cards and collectibles, uh, I think is a great a great place to to head towards. I love it, Aladdin. Did you have anything else to to add to that before I um I cut you off? I was like being autistic you're all good I, I had to move uh places at my house uh, see if i had better service out here um no the, the team has spoken on it really well and i'm sure we'll we'll dive into a bunch of different questions so amazing all right well uh, no need to okay so let me let me then let me then dig into the um dig into the pieces so one of the unique things and you know i i don't come from a trading card background i had no fucking idea about trading cards um you know never collected uh actually maybe when i was young i think i might have done pokemon cards pretty sure i actually did um i actually i did do you know what i did actually collect wwf um wcw like but they weren't cards they were more like the um the the photos back in the day um but anywho uh, other than other than sets i i don't really collect anything uh, else these days um I should actually say, you know, Bitcoin Times is a collectible, so there is something there. But like trading cards was outside of my um, my sphere of understanding. And, you know, when we got together, the initial idea was that we would print, um, what was it, like 34 individual cards or something like that. Like we were thinking, okay, look, let's do like a single uh, Satoshi card and like, you know, uh, you know, a couple single uh, cypherpunk cards and all this sort of stuff. And and the, the original premise was like to literally just have you print 34 basically uh unique cards and then you sort of took me on a bit of a you know tour of education which was like look we could do that that's no problem um you know that just sort of gives you these like individual cards but that's not really you know where the value is and, and i think this is i mean correct me if i'm wrong here but this was basically the genesis of the collaborative idea right is that we should instead of just printing a couple um unique cards we should actually partner in a deeper capacity and print a whole set of packs um, that have a whole series of cards and then alongside that do a couple of um, limited edition basically uncut sheets um, and do that all together as a campaign for people who are true collectors so talk talk me through a little bit of um, you know the education that you took me on there and and why what we're doing here is like unique special different than just um, 
than what a what I originally had envisioned, um, and b you know what the original or what the general sort of card launch is uh, usually all about. Yeah, there's two things uh, that really just started pushing me towards uh, creating the packs instead of just doing the individual cards themselves. Um, the, the first one was just the nostalgia and the fun and trading cards is really not knowing what you're going to get. So when you are buying a, a card all on its own, you know exactly what you're going to get. It just takes away so much of the fun and trading cards of uh, having that potential uh, pull. You don't know what it's going to be. So that was a, a really big part of what started pushing us towards the packs rather than just the one card. And the individual prints, um, these are going to be something really special that you can hang on your wall and show uh, to whoever comes in your office or wherever you have them uh, displayed. But at the same time, being able to get some packs or the box, you still have that uh, enjoyment of not knowing what you're going to get. And I think there's a lot more excitement that goes into that. And at the same time, I think the, the even more important aspect of actually creating these into a series is what our ultimate purpose and goal is for these cards is getting them out far beyond the Bitcoiners, getting them out to the general public, uh, going to different trading card shows that are far outside of the Bitcoin space, uh, being able to get them in many different places that are able to start to get the general public to ask these questions. And at the same time, uh, this collaboration was to really help get the word out about what you guys are doing with Spirit of Satoshi. And by putting these into packs and the boxes, uh, being able to take them out to the general public and get them more excited in the chase. Because again, if we go to one of these card shows and we just have the cards laid out, uh, we've taken at least 80% of the excitement away from them immediately because now they're just looking. They really want to be able to buy a pack and rip it open and see what they're going to get and have that chance for a one of one. Uh, the more scarce the card is in the pack, the more exciting it is for the person to be able to rip it. So I think these were the two real leading causes for us to go from just having an individual card that a Bitcoiner could buy to support uh, Spirit of Satoshi uh, versus being able to create something that can go far beyond the, the geyser campaign that you guys are doing and really spread the word about what Spirit of Satoshi is and what you're creating there uh, to as many people as possible. I love it. I love it. So talk me then through like these packs, the way we structure the tiers and everything, you know, I know we, we went back and forth on this and like you know, changes right up until the death um, before the launch of the campaign, you know, fucking all of us pulling our hair out and shit, trying to figure out what the best thing is for people. Um, so each tier is going to have um, either some packs, um, the top tiers have some boxes coming into them, but talk me through, like, I had no idea what an uncut sheet is. Um, and, you know, you sort of basically pitch me and the audience the, the, the way you did uh, previously on what, why an uncut sheet is unique and what we're doing um, with specifically the um, the top tier, the Satoshi tier um, and the Cypherpunk tier, um, you know, what, what people are getting for contributing on those ones. So the first thing that I have to touch on is the scarcity of these trading cards and, and compare that to what's out there for people that don't know. Um, in the trading card space, it, it's very relatable to the Federal Reserve. Uh, we started digging in about a year ago, but over the last few months, we've really just dialed in as much research as possible on this and started coming up with some uh, very scary numbers in the trading card space. Uh, a lot of these companies will they're not going to give you the finite supply of the trading cards. And the reason behind that is they don't know how well a certain set is going to sell. So they'll they'll start their first print and they'll put out, let's say, a, a million to five million packs possibly. And then if those sell really good, they will do another print and they'll put those out to the general public. So when you're buying these collectibles, you don't know what you are getting when it comes to scarcity. You could pull uh, a bunch of cards, you're expecting a certain number, but then they do uh, potentially one more print. Uh, if it's a really good seller that there's an endless amount of prints they could start doing beyond that. So with what we do with Bitcoin trading cards, staying in the ethos of Bitcoin, I, I can't 100% confirm this because the numbers are so hard to find. Um, honestly, a lot of the 
the actual numbers for trading cards that are out there are on Reddit more than anything. You can't really even find them on uh, their websites. Uh, they're very uh, guarded about how many packs they actually produce and, and what your odds are. So with the way that we do it, we've come out and put a 100% finite supply on what we print and when we print it. So you know exactly what you're going to get and what your odds are. So when we were creating these Spirit of Satoshi packs, uh, we put one foil card in every pack. Uh, you have anywhere from a one of 1,000 all the way down to a one of one you could potentially pull. And we have to make sure that the numbers uh, line up just perfect so that every pack has one of those. And then there's so many other things that go into uh, creating the exact numbers of each one of these foil cards so that it's not uh, random. And we really take our time to make it as special as possible in every single way. So that is really the, the biggest one for what we're going to start doing with Bitcoin trading cards uh, to the hobby and getting people to understand what true scarcity is. And hopefully get some of these trading card projects to uh, pay attention to how important it is to put a cap supply on what they're putting out. Um, th then when it comes to the sheets, you have uncut sheets that are basically uh, a proof print that comes from the printer. Uh, when they are printing these trading cards, you have a certain set amount of cards that are printed on one sheet, depending on the size of the printer. It can be different numbers, but they will print this proof run and send the proof run to us to make sure the quality of the cards is what we're looking for. The foils are right. Everything looks uh, exactly the way that we're hoping it's supposed to be. And then the trading card companies are allowed to keep these prints and basically uh, sell them or just keep them or destroy them, whatever they want. Well, being in Bitcoin, we want to keep that supply down uh, as low as possible uh, at the same time. So we are only printing uh, for the first two tiers, one uncut sheet for each one of those tiers. So each of those cards that are printed, there will be one sheet uh, where the, the card itself will be on this sheet with a matching foil. And it'll be something really, really special. And it will be a, a validated one of one. So th this will be one of the tiers that I think is uh, the coolest because when you're printing a, a poster or a really nice fine art print on the wall, um, those are great, but very seldomly do you see an actual foil on your wall that just when you are walking through the room, depending on where you're standing, uh, it, it just kind of takes on a life of its own from each position you're, you're viewing it from. So... This tier, I think, is going to be a really special one for collectors that want to have something uh, incredibly scarce and incredibly unique. And then the other two tiers, we are doing those as uh, fine art prints, call it G Clay. It's uh, one of the best prints that you can possibly do. And those will not have the foil on them. Those will be more of a traditional print. And again, these are to be able to give someone, if they're looking for a particular art that they really like about the cards, then... Uh, they can go in and support what you guys are doing on the Geyser campaign and have something really special, uh, I think really collectible and the way of the, knowing exactly how many of these are out there. And it's a really, it's a great way to show your support and get something back to be able to look at for many, many years, especially with where we think that Spirit of Satoshi is going to go in the future and, and how much good it's going to be able to do for the general public and for the Bitcoiners. Uh, you can look back at this print for as long as you have it and really enjoy the fact that you were a big part of making this happen. So thank you so much for that, man. W one of the things I wanted to, that, that captured my attention when you were first uh, explaining this to me was that the 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 satoshi one and the cypherpunk ones right so th they they're actually made of the same stock as the um, as the trading cards themselves right like they're a, they're, they're like a big blown up trading card right and and it's essentially going to be the only one of these things that ever exists ever 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 right exactly um yeah, that's fucking cool. Um, but that's th this, like, I must say, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe I'm, I'm over repeating what the lad has said, but like maybe someone who joined the team a uh, few months ago, I must say, this is what sold me on Bitcoin trading cards in general, guys. And I, I just going to underline what Aladdin said. Think about the Federal Reserve Bank versus Bitcoin. Federal Reserve Bank, the moment we need money to do whatever, it just starts burr, you know, like, brrr, we want to print more. 
Bitcoin, there is a limited amount. There will never be more than 21 million. The Bitcoin trading cards, what Aladdin just pointed out, I also found it extremely fascinating with other, again, not to name names, but other companies that make uh, trading cards. The moment there is demand, the market of trading cards gets diluted. They just print more. It's, it's more it's as much as they want to increase profits. With Bitcoin trading cards, we have set. We know exactly the numbers of the trading cards we'll print, and there will be no more prints ever in the future. And especially when we talk about the uncut sheets, and I think this is, for me, again, the significance. We will never be able to create any more of these uncut sheets ever. So the first tier one, for example... The, the Satoshi tier, this one picture that you see here, there will be no one else in the world that is going to have this same work of art. And the, the same applies for, for the other Anka cheats. I, I think this is, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm over exaggerating on, on like what my personal, I, I'm a true Bitcoiner, so I, this is something that truly makes a home run on, on, my, uh, on my side. It's the scarcity that we are, we are making something beautiful together, Spirit of Satoshi and Bitcoin trading cards, and, and introducing an unheard of scarcity in the in the trading card world and in general. So I just wanted to, 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 to let just once again reiterate this. I love it. I love it. So what, one thing, so if someone says, okay, look, what if um, what if I just take the trading card design and like, you know, pay a printer to print it. I think I think you answered this question for me, but for people listening, like can you explain like why it's not sort of trivial? Like there's you know what what the process is of particularly the uncut sheets, like how how that is done and what's unique about it. So there's companies um, out there that do validation for these cards and grading. Uh, we just got PSA to uh, validate us, basically. And this is a third party so that uh, if you really want to know if this card came from Bitcoin trading cards or if it was a, a knockoff that someone created, uh, this is where the third party comes in. And there's so many different elements that come into printing a trading card. It's uh, a lot more work than many people could ever imagine. Uh, you have anywhere from the paperweight to the exact type of inks that are being used to the cutting process. Uh, there's so many different pieces that come into creating a trading card. And when we submit to uh, the third party to be able to do these validations of the cards, they need to know all of these details. So that if there is a card that comes in that has been uh, reproduced by a random person, then they're able to pretty close immediately tell that this was not created by that particular printer. They also need to know what printer printed these cards because each printer has uh, different uh, abilities. So th this third party is the best way to really come in and, and be the goalkeeper for anybody that's trying to recreate these. Is it possible for someone to recreate them uh, perfectly and cheat the system? It, it is, but the same with all of my studies in Bitcoin, um, if someone does that, the incentives are not aligned. They're gonna spend far more than it's actually worth to try and recreate these, then it, it just wouldn't make sense for them to do that. So unless they wanted to destroy what we're doing, um, there's definitely not the incentive there to, to want to pull that off. And for the uncut sheets and stuff like that, uh, same thing applies. It would be nearly impossible for someone to create another uncut sheet without going to the exact printer that we use. And we're only using the best printers in the world. There, there are very, very few trading card printers in the world. And all their facilities are literally guarded like a casino. Uh, because of the value in the trading cards that they print. So they have cameras uh, just like a casino floor, hitting in every single angle in every direction, making sure that someone can't come in and, and cheat the system and steal the cards or, or pull some crap off like that. And at the same time, these trading card companies, if they were to do something shady, like reprinting for somebody else cards that they've already printed, they would lose... Um, everything they have working for them and they would be uh, shut down in the system immediately and no one would be using them ever again so the same thing applies for them there are no incentives for them to cheat the system like that unless someone showed up and said we'll pay you more than your company could make 
it, it, throughout all of the years that you plan on being in business, uh, there would be no reason for them to ever take a risk like that. And that is the great thing about working with uh, the best printers in the world. Uh, oh, I was just imagining Ocean's Eleven when you were describing that, like going in and trying to steal like Bitcoin trading cards or some shit. Um, <laughs> we, we, we could make a whole movie about it. I, I think there is there is a, maybe if I if I may um, I, I spent my last sixteen years in the automotive world and maybe just an analogy um, that that you see in but maybe it's easier to to rely uh, relate to you know today we see classic cars throughout the world right we see I don't know you have like a Mustang from nineteen seventies today we have um, com- uh, uh, production facilities we can make hundreds of thousands of cars daily but there are no replicas of the mustang from the 70s because this was made on a particular machine with and the complexity to pull this off it's once in a lifetime you you cannot uh, replicate this that's why i find like aladdin points out the the you you see there's like a deep rabbit hole why this is impossible but um for me that it's that's why i'm just like pointing out how, how incredibly unique and scarce these uh, cards are, especially the, the 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 sheets. This is something that we'll never ever do again. This, the same art to replicate it, I think it's uh, it, it's impossible. So, I, good luck for those that are gonna get them. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> this is something really truly special that you can keep for yourself or you know keep it for the generations to come. Yeah, it's a good analogy. Um, the yeah the the whole, I mean. Yeah, it's like the the whole process. It's not just like the replication of the of the item itself, but you know, as you said, like there's there's a bunch of things that go into it, which you know, the the time, the place, uh, the process, all these sorts of things that um, are very difficult, if not impossible, to replicate. So, um, okay, um, so then one one final question I had around the um, the trading cards and the um, and the uncut sheets. So so let's say I'm someone out there, I'm a collector and I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, uh, I definitely want to get some of these cards. Um, and I'm looking at the, um, at, at the sheets and I'm like, okay, well, what, you know, what's the benefit here? Sure. You know, it's one of, one of one, um, you know, is it, is it something like if I'm a more economically and commercially motivated collector, is it something that I could potentially you know, auction in the future on something like scarcity. So let's say like this collectible collaborative um, edition of trading cards down the track becomes the pack, right? Like it's, or, or it's, it's the, the series that everybody wants to get a hold of. And I'm like the only person with, um, with this blown up uncut sheet. Is, is that something I could auction later on scarcity or like t- talk me through like particularly the benefit of those, um, those top four. So you have your personal uh, reasons for for purchasing the sheet. I know some people would definitely want to purchase it again to be able to celebrate for many years to come that they were part of the the contribution that helped make Spirit of Satoshi what it'll be in the future. And I think that's a really important one. And you'll have a a pretty big group of people that will want to specifically uh, do that for for those reasons. But then you have the collectors that might want to look at this as a potential investment. And that really comes down to the success of what Bitcoin trading cards is able to do in the future. But honestly, the success of what um, Spirit of Satoshi is able to do in the end. Uh, We're hopefully going to be doing quite a few collaborations over the years. And it's really going to come down to each collaboration and what that project is able to do in the future. If Spirit of Satoshi is able to be incredibly successful, which I think you guys will, the bigger the success that you guys have, the more value potential uh, that sheet is going to be worth, especially it being a one of one. Uh, We did um, a a very special, I have an artist friend of mine, Robert Crum. Uh, He's in the top 50 artists uh, in world history. And because I'm close friends with him, we were able to get him to a, a donate basically a piece of art that we were able to put into the pack that we did for uh, Miami Bitcoin. And that particular card was the cover of 
uh, Majestic Funnies that he did back in the 70s. So there was something really cool that started happening after we came out with that card where people would go and try to search down an original copy of that comic book. And then being able to combine your your trading card that you found with the actual magazine that it or a comic book that it came from uh, is a really amazing collection. And you have something very similar that you could do with this right now uh, by collecting this sheet. If you're able to pull the, the matching card, um, that is something incredibly special. So combining those two will just make it that much more valuable. So there's many different pieces that come into it, but I think in the end, it's going to be both of our proof of work over time that is going to put the most value into it. And the biggest proof of work that we need to do beyond the trading cards, beyond what you guys are doing is Bitcoin adoption. Uh, the further we make it in that, the more value I do believe that these are going to be worth. Uh, one of the big reasons I decided to make these trading cards was we are literally uh, making history right now with Bitcoin. And there's nothing bigger for the entire world that is going to have an impact quite like Bitcoin. So being able to have some cards from... Uh, it's kind of like the meme that comes out with grandpa and the kids are sitting on his lap and they're like, grandpa, you were really dollar cost averaging Bitcoin back when it was 3,500 or 17,000. Um, this is going to be a really big thing. The more that the, the world starts to embrace Bitcoin. So I think there's many elements that come into the, the end value and each individual is going to be able to choose what that value is for them. Uh, I can tell you for me, unless I really needed the money, I would much rather have this print on my wall and be able to celebrate, especially the bigger spirit of Satoshi gets uh, many, many years in the future and show my grandchildren that I was a part of helping spirit of Satoshi uh, get the funding it needed to become what it is today. Really appreciate that, man. So, okay, let me then uh, round up this section of the conversation with uh, the Geyser Fund is live now. Um, go on there follow it. There's, there's a bunch of small contributions. So it's like if, if trading cards aren't your thing, um, you know, you can throw like 33,000 sets and, uh, you know, we, we picked all the, um, you know, the usual funny numbers, 60, 61,500, 210,000, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you can do that. Um, but the trading cards are available exclusively for the top four, um, tiers, right? And it is only tier one, which there is a one of one, that's it, there's only one of those, and tier two, which are three individual one of ones. So you've got the um, the, the the foil trading card blow up of Adam Back, or Hal Finney, or Nick Zabo, you know, they're a, they're a single individual one of one. Um, you know, they're they're the top two tiers, and then the second tier is the remnant and the um, and the maximalist come with uh, trading card packs. Along with, uh, as Aladdin mentioned, a blow-up poster of uh, on that special paper. I can't remember the, the name of the uh, the paper, but a blow-up poster of the uh, remnant card or the um, the maximus card each. So they're they're a bit cheaper, um, and you can get those, and they will be uh, shipped out to you um, once the campaign is done, and when obviously all the prints are ready, which is going to take a little bit of time. So. The last thing I really want to touch on here is um, is the Twenty One Questions book, and I want to give you guys a bit of background on what how that emerged, what it is, um, and hopefully what it'll be um, useful by people uh, moving forward. So, so we're calling it the world's first AI enhanced Bitcoin book. So, you know, I know some people might think, "Oh, yeah, here we go, another fucking Bitcoin book." Um, and look, you know, there is a lot. Um, you know, there's there's some also some really good beginners books out there. You know, there's uh, Twenty One Lessons. There's um, there's the Little Bitcoin book. There's some there's some really awesome ones like that. But what what we wanted to do, and this you know came about as actually uh, an accident, was as we were training the Spirit of Satoshi model. Uh, what we had to do was we had to compile uh, many, many, many questions because you know, if you want to train a model to be uh, something that answers questions, you need to give examples of questions and answers, right? These, these models function like mirrors, essentially. And what we did was we collected and collated thousands, and I mean thousands of different questions about Bitcoin. And, you know, we... We're, we're essentially, you know, a data science team, and what we did along d during that process was we kind of waited and determined through that process, like what are the most 
common, important, pertinent questions um, about Bitcoin. Like, what are the things that most people are asking? What are the things that are the most important? What are the things that um, people care about? You know, what the hell is confusing them about Bitcoin? All this sort of stuff. And we basically, you know, after a bit of work, we distilled it down initially to like 100 questions and we're like, screw this. Let's try and distill it down to 21 questions, which was, which was genuinely tough. Um, but we managed to do it. And we managed to do it in such a way where we split it into basically three categories uh, or three parts. We've got the Bitcoin part, which is made up of questions like, what is Bitcoin? Why is Bitcoin important? Who controls the Bitcoin network, et cetera. So there's like seven questions there. Then we've got part two, which is like the economic section. So, uh, you know, there's seven questions there, which is like, what is money? Why is money important? You know, what are the properties of sound money, etc. And then we've got part three, which is misconceptions, which you can kind of think of almost like as FUD. Um, and this was really hard because, you know, as we know, there's like the there's the eternal FUD uh, surrounding Bitcoin. It's going to boil the oceans. It's going to kill the babies. It's going to do all those sort of stuff. But we've got seven questions there as well, which is, you know, since Bitcoin is only code, can't someone just copy it? Should I diversify into other cryptocurrencies? Um, you know, won't Bitcoin uh, being disinflationary, discourage spending and, you know, end the world and all this sort of shit. So we've got basically three categories of question. And what we did was we used uh, our model um, with a whole you know, bunch of cajoling and wrestling because, you know, these models are a pain in the ass sometimes. But we, we did that and we actually, each question uh, is answered in a really simple, straightforward way by the model. And then we got a bunch of the best contributors around the world. So Armin the Parman, Knut Svanholm, Natalie Brunel, uh, Guy Swan, Thomas Strollite. Uh, who else do we have in here? Giacomo Zucco, Samson Mao, um, CK Snarks, uh, Peter Sinonji, Max Hillebrand, Daniel Princey, John Vallis as well. Shit. So we, we've got a bunch of different contributors. And basically... Each of them selected somewhere between like two to five questions um, and they answered in their own words as well. So basically the book is designed in such a way that you could give it to someone, you know, a normie, person in Bitcoin, whatever, and they can open up to any page and they see at the top what the question is and they can get a straight up answer to it. And what we're going to do with this little project is we're going to do like a 21 question series of books. We're going to do like a book dedicated to the FUD. So like the 21 questions, the FUD edition. We're going to do 21 questions, the energy edition. We're going to do 21 questions, the, I don't know, whatever else uh, edition that is, you know, important from a theming perspective. We might even do like a 21 questions homeschooling edition and, you know, 21 questions like, uh, you know, healthy eating edition where we, you know, kind of, do a bit like what Safer Dean did with uh, Fiat Food. So there's like, there's a whole theme and thing that we want to do here, which is going to be a collaboration between the models we build and people who are leaders um, or leading thinkers uh, in their respective space. And obviously, we're going to begin this with um, with the 21 questions central foundational Bitcoin edition. And I genuinely think this will become one of those books that like, Everybody will have on their bookshelf that everybody will buy like a five or ten pack for for their um, friends and family that they're trying to orange pill because it just like goes to the heart of like, you know, when, when people get or are introduced to Bitcoin, what, what do they have straight away? They either have questions about what the hell this is, how is, how is it not a scam, how the fuck does it still work, um, why is it different to Ethereum, like what's special about it? You know, why shouldn't I buy Dogecoin because Elon Musk backs it? Like, you know, all of these sorts of things happen. And, you know, I really believe that this will be one of those books where, hey, you know, we, we just got to the core of all of that crap and let's answer these things. And sure, this won't get them to become an expert in Bitcoin, but it'll give them like it'll it'll help them with those like initial concerns when concerns is basically another way of saying questions um, and hopefully put them on the path to learning more about Bitcoin and you know, buying books like the Bitcoin Standard, et cetera, where they can actually learn more and deepen their knowledge. So in the spirit of everything else that we're doing here with like proof of knowledge, um, with the trading cards and the initiative to go out there and educate people in a fun and dynamic way, there's also the 21 Questions book, which is a way for people to basically get something back from, you know, this AI that we've been developed and hopefully also orange pill the people that they've been trying to orange pill um, in private. So that's 
on there as well. That that is a perk that's available on every single tier, actually. So we're gonna we're gonna be publishing the book, obviously physically. Um, it'll be hardcover and paperback available on um, Amazon. Uh, it'll be a digital version. Actually, also a cool thing that we're gonna do with it: the Audible version. We're gonna have the Spirit of Satoshi voice read it, which is gonna be kind of cool. So then, um, that's uh, you know that that's still a little bit away, but um, you know. The, the plan is now to sort of pre-sell access to this. Obviously, the first thing that people will get access to is all of the digital stuff. Um, and then we will start beginning to ship um, all the physical things. So if that's a little bit more up your alley, um, get in there. Um, it's on the guys of the campaign right now. Um, and as I said, it's available across all the tiers. If the trading cards and this are both your fancy, then any trading card perk that you pick up will come with the book in all of its formats, soft cover, hard cover, digital, audible, the whole lot. Um, and look, that's, um, that brings us to about uh, 2.30. That's an hour of discussion on this campaign. I want to, before I sort of wrap this up, I want to give it over to, um, to Mick from the Geyser Fund and, uh, and give him a chance to say a couple of words around what Geyser is doing, why this kind of a project uh, is ideal for Geyser, and why anybody who's listening to this space is, um, A, should be involved in supporting Geyser projects, but also should think about creating a Geyser project of their own, because one of the most incredible things about uh, the Bitcoin community in particular is that everyone's out there in some way, shape, or form trying to assist and help uh, each other, trying to grow the community. Um, and hopefully as that grows... You know, products like Geyser Fund, which are a million times better than the shitty Kickstarters of the world, will become central to that um, to that community collaboration. So, Mick, hand it over to you for a sec. Yo, so good to be here. What a great discussion! Such an honor to be here, guys. And just to say, it's it really is an honor. And uh, how amazing is it that there is this collaboration among these different Bitcoin companies all coming together for the same for the same purpose. We're all different organizations, but we're all part of the same organism, right? We're, just, we're, we're living inside the same beast called Bitcoin. And it's really, truly an honor to, to be here and see these incredible ideas, uh, incredible projects coming to life. So yeah, Alex, it's uh, thanks for that. And uh, the really, you guys said it all, I'll keep it super short, but yeah, guys are really tries to make it super easy for these types of ideas to launch um, and and take kind of crystallize and and uh, for, you know, to make it super easy really so that anyone who has a cool idea can just launch it and quickly see if there's support for it and then also making it super easy for contributors to play a part in supporting Bitcoin companies Bitcoin projects Bitcoin ideas and helping push Bitcoin forward so um, we do that by allowing you creators to uh, sell, you know, ask for donations, sell rewards, um, and for contributors to fully recognize because you can log in with your Twitter profile, with Noster, with other social profiles so that you can kind of uh, make yourself feel like a, a, a bigger part of the project, make, make yourself feel, feel like a contributor. Um, yeah, that said, I mean, uh, uh, really excited for this. Um, we do have one small uh, um, uh, announcement that we'll be making this week about potentially integrating subscriptions into Geyser very, very soon. So that's for another conversation. Just want to drop it in there. But yeah, again, thank you guys so much for making us part of this. Super honored. Amazing job, BTC uh, trading cards. Awesome job, Spurs and Satoshi. Really excited. I might go ahead and purchase a pack myself soon. So uh, leave, leave some for me. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. And I just want to do a quick shout out. The man, the myth, the legend, uh, Brad Mills just picked up the top pack. What a fucking absolute gun. He's, um, Brad, I just want to say he's like one of the most, um, one of the most, I, I think probably the top contributor on Geyser. Am, am I right, Mick, or what? Like, Yeah, I mean, he's the second because Geyser is the first, but he okay. supported us through the Geyser grants uh, as well. So absolutely, you're right to say that Brad is, is a top go dog, a top dog in, in Bitcoin. He's an incredible philanthropist and deserves a monument or, or several. He really does. We we need to yeah we need to do a um, 
uh, a, a Brad Mills trading card pack, you know, some with yes. the with the long beard, some with the short beard, all that sort of shit. <laughs> what a fucking legend. So thank you, Brad. Um, if anyone wants to follow his lead, well, I mean, you know, top tier is gone in that case, which leaves only three remaining one of ones, uh, one of Hal Finney, one of Nick Zabo, uh, one of Adam Back, and then uh, and all the other tiers. So Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, thank you, Mick, for making this uh, this all possible. Thank you, Aladdin, Oliver, Brandon, the whole crew there for um, for bringing these trading cards and everything that we're doing here together. This was uh, incredible. I want to thank the um, the Spirit of Satoshi team. So there's a couple of them on the call here: Alan, Breno, Jeff, uh, Jason, Vano, um, for for helping me. Um, put this thing together and build it and uh, particularly Jason for, for the tireless effort he put into basically wrestling with the model and herding cats uh, in the form of Bitcoiners trying to get them to answer their um, their set of questions so we can put it together in this goddamn 21 questions book I swear to god trying to trying to like you know Satoshi's number one invention was that he realized that to make an unchangeable system you just have to get a bunch of crazy people to agree on something which is never going to fucking happen um, and that's exactly why bitcoin is immutable because if you want to change anything it's never going to happen bitcoiners are all fucking like literally it's like the, the, the other thing other than herding cats I think of it as like wheelbarrowing frogs try, like try that like that's literally uh, how Bitcoin holds itself together and will forever remain unchangeable. So with that, um, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate you listening in. Um, jump over to the Geyser campaign. I think it's the featured campaign at the moment. So just geyser.fund. Um, show some support. And, um, yeah, love you all. We'll see you out there. Um, we'll be doing one more Spaces in a couple of weeks after Madeira Conference as well to follow up with everyone. And, um, yeah, thank you.